So there was a couple recent comments on my channel that actually present a good opportunity to talk about something that you should watch out for or a specific example of the kinds of things that you should be watching out for. So here's a couple comments that recently came across my channel, which you're not going to find now because I have removed them. And the first comment here at the bottom is basically saying, I have some stable coin, which is the USDT, which is Tether. And I have the seed phrase, which I have erased most of because I'm the outside chance that this is not a scam comment from a bot which I don't think is likely. But if this is a real person and they, they put, you know, a thousand dollars in here, and if that's a lot of money to them, I'm not looking to make it easy for, you know, one of the people that views this video to steal it from them. The other reason is because I'm actually doing you a favor because these two different accounts are saying almost the exact same thing. And they were both dropping the exact same 12 word seed phrase set to restore a wallet with. And that in turn makes me believe that it is probably malicious code in the wallet, much like how it's talked about in this guard your crypto in this guard your crypto video that I did a while back, where it talks about using wallet guard to help scan smart contracts in order to identify malicious code, commonly referred to as wallet drainers. What a wallet drainer is, is it something that you interact with and it goes out and it executes some malicious code in the smart contract, which typically is designed to look for any other cryptos that it can steal by way of authorizing outbound transactions from your wallet to a different wallet that you don't have any control of, thereby draining your crypto from your wallet and sending it to some scammer. And so this attempt at a scam, or at least I'm confident enough to say that this attempt at a scam or, or a theft presented me with a very easy opportunity to create a video to remind you guys to be very careful with your crypto wallets. In much the same way, you shouldn't really drop your public receive addresses online either for just anybody to read because then that makes it very easy for a bad actor to just send you some crypto which may contain malicious code which is designed to drain your wallet now i'm not a cybersecurity expert i'm not a blockchain developer so i'm not going to pretend to fully understand how loading a completely different wallet could put you at risk what i am going to say though is I'm not interested in potentially stealing stablecoin from somebody that clearly doesn't know what they're doing, assuming that this is a legitimate comment, but I'm convinced that these are not legitimate comments, which then leads me to believe that it's a scammer that knows how to bot and has some idea how to scam and steal crypto from people, which in turn suggests to me one of two things. Either they know a whole bunch, except they don't know that you can't just load some other wallet altogether and then use that wallet to steal crypto from another wallet. Although I think it probably depends on the wallet application or the wallet device that you're using. Or you can use a separate wallet to steal crypto from a completely different wallet which uses a completely different seed phrase set of words as i said there are aspects of cryptocurrency that i don't yet know or understand i am not a cybersecurity expert i am not a blockchain developer i am not a blockchain security analyst so there are some things that I cannot advise you on other than just a little bit of common sense and stressing that you should err on the side of caution and you shouldn't just drop your public receive addresses here, there, everywhere publicly because you're going to make it very easy for a bad actor to attempt to steal from you. If you're going to do that, I would strongly suggest that you get a completely separate device from the one that you normally manage your real crypto with. You set up a completely separate wallet 
that's com totally empty. And then you get the public receive addresses from that completely empty wallet that you are using on a completely separate device from the device that you actually manage your real crypto portfolio with. And then you use that to request donations or to have your, your winnings you know, sent to that address. Like if somebody on social media is saying, drop your ETH address, the first thousand commenters are gonna have a chance to win one ETH, but you gotta act now. You gotta drop your ETH address below, like and subscribe and, you know, retweet and you know, all that stuff, right? Don't drop a public address from your main wallet that you are using to manage your crypto portfolio. That's not worthwhile because there's a very small chance that you're going to get any free crypto. And if you do get crypto for free, you got to remember that they they could be just trying to, to scam you, right? They, they might be just looking to send you malicious code in a smart contract that is going to execute a wallet drainer. So be careful. Now, to be clear, I do post an ICP donations public address. And based on things that I've just said, that's probably not the best idea. So to be very clear, that is a public receive address from within my one of my internet identities for an address within the NNS, the network nervous system for ICP. And I doubt, but I don't know, but I do doubt that somebody can put malicious code into ICP and then send that to that neuron in NNS in order to execute a wallet drainer. Now, I could be wrong, but the truth is that well over 90% of my crypto in that internet identity NNS is tied up in staking. And you couldn't transfer that crypto even with malicious code. Even if something malicious could be put in and then sent to that ICP address, I think that the worst that would happen is somebody might steal about 30 ICP from me if it's even possible to do that in the first place, which I kind of have my doubts. But to be clear, I am not following my own advice in that specific example, because really what I should do is set up a completely different internet identity that doesn't have any crypto in it at all, and then set up an internet computer neuron get the public address and then use that address as a donation address also to this point i haven't received any donated crypto so the risk is pretty low right because until somebody sends me something there's virtually zero risk 